It's hard to imagine, but there was a time when vacation travel did not involve airplanes, and the journey was just as important as the destination. Seth Stevenson's book, Grounded, Down-to-Earth Journeys Around the World, tells the story of his old-fashioned travel adventure with his girlfriend, Rebecca Legrand. They are both here this morning. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. So this is something I think a lot of people think about, just dropping everything and going away around the world for a period of time. You were gone for just about six months. Mm -hmm, correct. How did you get the idea in the first place? Uh, well, I think our, life has, our lives had sort of settled into these routines, and we were going out to the same restaurants and doing the same things, and it was all fine, it was lovely, but we wanted uh, an adventure. We were in search of breaking out of that rut that we were in, and we wanted to do something special, uh, something that we could look back on as an accomplishment. You're a writer, you were working in a law firm. When, when, when you told your job, what did they say? Uh, it was definitely not the usual, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm moving on discussion. The, 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 what it, uh, certainly got some uh, jaw dropping when I uh, sent around the final email saying, it's, it's been great working with you all, but I'll be getting on a freighter in a few minutes. Um, but it was fun. I think you, get a, you, know, you can get a little bit of jealousy and a little bit of, are you crazy? So the idea behind going and not getting on a plane was your idea? Yeah, well, we both hate flying. I know Rebecca's really scared of flying, and it's sort of contagious. I've gotten scared of flying. But it's also just, um, you know, flying isn't really traveling. You don't really think about your flights. You don't really have a, a genuine cultural experience on a flight. Whereas when you're on a train or on your, you're on a ship, it's much more contemplative. You're at ground level. You're looking out. You're seeing the, mm -hmm. the space that you're moving through in a way you don't on a plane. And you don't have to deal with delays and yeah. or else. Volcanic <laughs> ash in your engine. <laughs> yes, indeed. A, a perfect time to talk to you because so many people are grounded right now. And they are not traveling by plane, but we should. You went uh, in Germany and Helsinki by ferry, in Russia by Trans Siberian Railway, Japan by bullet train, Vietnam by bicycle, bus, and train. You went by cruise ship. You went on a container ship at one point? Yeah, container ships are a great way to travel. Not a lot of people have tried it, but you get to hang out with the crew on the navigational bridge, learn how to pilot the ship. You, uh, you don't, you're not stuck in the container itself. <laughs> no, I don't recommend that would be a terrible way to travel. But maybe uh, affordable. Yeah, <laughs> you could stow away, but no, don't do that. How much uh, to travel by container ship? Uh, it's, you know, it's expensive to move long distances across water because, because not many people do it, so there's no competition of services being offered to do that. But a container ship, it's about the same as a business class airplane ticket across an ocean. The whole trip, about six months, cost you about how much? We were saying somewhere a little more than $20,000 for the two of us, I think. We'd lived cheaply, We've sa we'd saved up, and we, we canceled our apartment when we left, so we weren't paying any rent. And, you know, when you take out rent pay and take out cable television, you're, you actually end up not spending that much more yeah. traveling around the world. And 20 grand, obviously, most of it's spent for the transportation because you clearly didn't take much with you. Um, we, we actually have the bags. These are the bags that you actually went with These on are vacation. Our backpacks, and yeah. this is all you brought. Yep. So, That's what it. did you bring with you? Uh, we brought, you know, as little clothing as you can, and then I have an electronics issue, so uh, I don't know if we brought my prop electronics. Uh, but uh, I'm a big fan of uh, a GPS. I feel yeah. like you can't travel without shortwave radio, binoculars for the freighter for some serious GPS, whale watching. This laundry line huge to dry out. I only packed three pairs of underwear, uh, and so we had to rinse those out and have dry them out at night. How was that for you, Rebecca? The three pairs of underwear? I'm very fond of them by the end. Uh, Constantly rinse and wash. Yes. Good yes. job with the hand washing. But uh, yeah, so packing very light and just a few essentials, um, and, you know, things that you're going to use a lot. Like, you know, I do use a GPS and a shortwave radio a lot, but anything you're not going to be using all the time, yeah, dump it. light. Yeah. What's one thing you would have done differently if you did it all over again? I would have loved to take animal-based transport. I would have loved to ride a camel oh, nice. or an elephant or taken a stagecoach, uh, but we, we didn't uh, find any of those uh, getting from point A to point B and with animal-pulled uh, vehicles. <laughs> any new travel challenges in the future? Uh, well, we've been doing a little more sailing lately. I would love to do a longer haul sailing journey and get better at that and cover longer distances on a sailboat. Good stuff. All right. Seth Stevenson, Rebecca Legrand, thanks for coming in this morning. Thank thanks you. For having us. A lot happens early on The Early Show. Weekday mornings on CBS.